I would like to present you today the elbow arthroscopy, the basic setup and portal placement. It is important for surgeons who begin with elbow arthroscopy to learn practical things that you cannot find in the books. What are the indications for elbow arthroscopy? We have free or fixed loose bodies. We have primary arthritis with osteophytes, osteochondritis, dissecans. Another indication is the post-traumatic uh, stiffness with adhesions and reduced range of motion of elbow. We have also the instability and the synovial plique and another indication can be a fracture situation. Another circumstances when we are indicated the elbow arthroscopy are the synovitis, the infection of the elbow joint and the lateral epicondylitis. The contraindications for the elbow arthroscopy are the general contraindications with risk of anesthesia, the extraarticular pathology, the heterotopic ossification, or the transposition of the ulnar nerve with risk of injury of this nerve. What is needed for the elbow arthroscopy? I mean the instrumentation. We need the same mechanical instruments that are used in other joints. We recommend a standard four millimeter or 2.7 millimeter with 30 degree wide angle arthroscope. Another instruments that we need are the cannulas, syringe, trocars. The trocars can be conical or blunt tipped, sheath, shaver or biter, radio frequency ablation devices, switching sticks, bas uh, basket forceps, grasping forceps, coho clamps, and of course, arthroscopic pump or gravity inflow. What kind of anesthesia is recommended for elbow arthroscopy? General anesthesia is preferred because it provides optimal muscular relaxation, which is important in achieving joint distraction. Regional anesthesia can also be made, but the patient's postoperative neurological status is difficult to assess after the surgery. There are three options of positioning the patient for the elbow arthroscopy. The supine position or supine suspended and the pro position. In our clinic, we recommend and we are performing the elbow arthroscopy in lateral decubitus position. That's why I will demonstrate the basic setup and the portal placement in this positioning. What are the strengths and limitations of lateral decubitus position? We have improved airway, airway access compared with the prone position, and this is an easier job for the anesthesiologist. We have uh, ready access to posterior elbow with anatomic orientation of the structures. It can be easily converted to open procedure posteriorly or laterally. It allows for free flexion and extension of the elbow intraoperatively. Another strength is that elbow can be maintained in a stable position and we don't need to any traction device. The limitations of this positioning is that the airway is not as accessible as supine position. If not proper, properly positioned, anterior elbow access can be compromised. Medial elbow may be more difficult to access for open surgical procedures, and it is slightly more difficult positioning of patient compared with the supine technique. For the lateral decubitus position, we need an axillary pad or an arm holder. 
We need padding pillow placed under the knee and ankle. We need bolster behind the patient's back to prevent the patients from leaning backwards and bolster also in front of the patient's pubic symphysis to prevent the patient from falling. The optimal positioning involves having the patient's leaning slide forward so that the elbow of the operative extremity extends well beyond the edge of the oper operating table. The arm will rest in 90 degree of flexion on the axillary roll or arm holder. The roll will be placed proximal enough to allow additional flexion to be applied while working in the anterior compartment. A non-sterile or sterile tourniquet will be pumped to 250 millimeter Hg. Before we start with the arthroscopy, we mark on the elbow the bony landmarks, and here are the lateral epicondyl and the radial head on the lateral part. The olecranon process is in the middle of the elbow. On the medial side, it is important to mark the medial epicondyl and the ulnar nerve. You palpate it to see if it dislocates. There are many portals that can be placed when we are performing an elbow arthroscopy. For a standard elbow arthroscopy, four till five portals are usually enough. The direct lateral portal or soft spot portal, the proximal posterior lateral portal and anterior lateral portals and the proximal anteromedial, also called superomedial portal. The direct posterior portal or trans triceps is also called posterocentral portal and uh, is directly through the triceps tendon about one to two centimeters proximal to the olecran tip. The direct lateral portal or soft spot portal is in the triangle between the radial head, the olecranon, and lateral epicondyl. The proximal posterolateral portal is at the level of olecranon tip, radial to the triceps tendon. The proximal anterolateral portal is anteriorly to the lateral epicondyl. The anterolateral portal is two centimeter distal and two centimeter anterior to the epicondyl. And because of the proximity of the radial nerve and the posterior anterobrachial cutaneous nerve is not performed nowadays anymore. Medially, there are two, ports, two portals which are often performed. The anterior medial portal, two centimeters anterior and two centimeters distal to the medial epicondyl. It often created under arthroscopic control. We have to take care here of the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve, the median nerve and the brachial artery. Another medial portal is the proximal anteromedial or superior medial portal. It is one centimeter proximal and one centimeter anterior to the medial epicondyl. The median nerve and the brachial artery are about two centimeters away from this portal, so the risk of injury of these two structures is low. We begin the elbow arthroscopy with injecting 20 milliliter saline solution in the joint through the direct lateral portal or soft spot portal. The first skin incision and the first portal will be proximal posterolateral portal where we introduce a switching stick and after that the sheath and the arthroscope. 
the structures that we can identify and describe through the proximal posterior lateral portal are the medial gutter, the olecranon fossa, and the olecranon and the trochlea. After that, we do a maneuver. You go with the arthroscope along the lateral edge of the olecranon, and you kind of fall into the posterior lateral gutter. After that, we make the next incision on the soft spot, and we can identify the radial head, the capitulum, the ulnar humeral joint. In this moment of the surgery, we can identify and resect a dorsal lateral plica, for example, and we can perform with a trocar the very important instability test for LUCL, RCL, or annular ligament. Sometimes, in order to see all these structures, it's impossible uh, because of an extended plica. Uh, that's why you have to start blindly with a shaver and reject it. After that, we will go to the anterior part of the elbow, and normally uh, you start with the anteromedial portal in which you do a skin incision first, and then you insert the trocar till you reach the bone. When you feel bone contact, you will, you, you will introduce the trocar into the joint by just sliding it along the anterior part of the bone. You can open up the portal with the help of the forceps or scissors. The proximal anterolateral portal you perform under endoscopic control. First, you will introduce the needle and then you make a skin incision and introduce afterwards the other instruments. We can identify and describe the coronoid process, uh, the trochlea and also the coronoid fossa. In addition, you can identify the radial head and the capitulum. Here you can identify the uh, ERCB by opening the capsule and you can perform a debridement of the ERCB for lateral elbow, elbow pain due to epicondylitis. This was only a short introduction into the elbow arthroscopy, which is very complex and needs time to become a routine.